Lift up your hand in the presence of the Lord, if you will. Father's looking for fresh surrender. He's looking for a new level of surrender. He wants to hear out of our spirit a yes. And as he does, it will align us to receive from him what he has for us. God doesn't ask for us to have everything together, everything in line, but he does ask for a yes in our spirit. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes to your plan. Yes to your strategy. Yes to what you want to do with my life. And God, we say withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. We say we give you all. We surrender afresh to you tonight. As our church, as this ministry. Whatever you want to do, you come and do. Tonight, whatever you want to do, you come and do. In our lives, in our family, whatever you want to do, you come and do. Give us the grace to say yes. And the grace to align our hearts with that that you are doing in our life. We ask it in Jesus' name. Receive our sacrifice. We submit ourselves to you as the living sacrifice. Receive it, Lord. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. name. Amen. Amen. In this act, in this atmosphere of worship, let's shift our heart into a mode of giving. Unto the Lord, giving is an act of worship. Tonight was really about surrender. It's about sacrifice. It's about God asking us for more. And in that act, let's give our gifts to God, be it our tithes, offerings, be it a seed tonight that says, God, I'm believing you to do something special in my life. Please pour out into my life tonight. But tonight, let's let's give unto the Lord. There are several different ways you can give. You can text... 77977. Text the word fresh anointing to 77977. You can log on to FAHOW.org, our website, and give that way. Cash app is dollar sign FAHOW. You can give by push pay. When you text fresh anointing to 77977, that opens up push pay. And in push pay, you can do what I do every week set up recurring giving to where you don't have to think about it automatically uh, from your debit card or from your account. The giving to God is on a recurring basis. Very, very uh, easy way to do it. That's the way I do it. Whatever way you give, if you want to write a check, you can write a check and put it in one of those envelopes. If you have cash, there are envelopes in the chair in front of you. Take one of those white envelopes, fill it out legibly, if you will. The ushers will be coming around in a minute. But I feel like tonight is a night of a seed offering to the Lord. It says, God, I'm believing you for something tonight. How many of you came believing for something tonight? Oh, wow, six of you. I said, how many of you came believing for something tonight. You know, this meeting wasn't even supposed to happen. It was a last minute adjustment. And how many of you know when God adjusts things at the last minute, it's because he has something for you that was not last minute. God plans from eternity past. Before the foundation of the world was laid, this night was ordained by God. And I believe it was ordained with something for you with your name on it. Why don't you sow into God in the beginning and say, Lord, I'm believing you for something tonight. And name it. Name it the seed. Name that what you want God to do for you tonight and sow it into the ground and release your faith and watch God move. I said, watch him move. You didn't hear me. I said, watch him move. You didn't hear me. I said, watch him break you through to another level. Watch him change the very trajectory of your life tonight by one seed and faith release in the atmosphere. So hold those gifts up before the Lord, whatever you're doing, even if you're writing a check, Just hang on just a second. Father, in Jesus' name, I decree that every seed that is released into the ground tonight has a massive harvest attached to it. 
I decree, God, that the glory of the Lord will be released and uh, uh, revealed tonight. I ask you to have your way, God, in this atmosphere by your hand and by your power. In Jesus' name we declare, amen and amen. Ushers, you may come and collect the offering as I uh, give my gift as well. an anointing on that yeah 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 did y'all feel that yeah 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 come on give it to me i believe that that's what god's saying to you tonight i really believe that's what god's saying to you tonight you're saying god can you heal me you know what he's saying god can you bless me god will you deliver me god will you meet me can you feel it? Release your faith. This is your night. Why don't you say thank you to the Lord for saying yes to you tonight? Yes is the word of the Lord. Listen, glad you all are here. Tonight was normally a prayer night, but again, we shuffle things around. A uh, great friend is in town. Bishop Fred, if you'll come on up, grab a mic. I want you to introduce our brother in just a minute. Uh, I love these kind of gatherings because God has something special with your name on it. Those of you who are in here and those watching online, I'm telling you, tonight is a night tailor made for you. And there's grace coming from heaven just for you. So thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for making your way out. And get ready to receive what the Lord has. In fact, lift up two hands and say, Lord, I'm ready. Well, let's give the Lord another clap offering. Amen. We have with us tonight uh, a very good friend of the ministry, Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Tete. He's a clinical psychologist, so be careful. We got shrink in the house. <laughs> Glory to God. But this is a, a very anointed man of God who command the word. And I have no doubt that tonight that the Lord is going to use him to be a blessing. We thank God for Bishop and Apostle Kemi for what the Lord is doing. But let's give the Lord a clap of friend. If you can stand on your feet as doctor come forward. Come on, Doc.
Thank you very much. I know time is well gone, but I enjoyed the choir the last time, and I don't know if we can do something before I preach. Is it possible? Can I have one more song before I preach? I want something soft, gentle. You can even sit there and say, You are my strength. Strength like no one. Strength like no one. Reaches me. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like. Lift up, lift up your hands to the heavens and just wave to the Holy Spirit. You lift me up. You lift me up. Thank you, Jesus. You are my joy. Joy, no one. Joy like no one reaches me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for tonight. I pray that you may use these clay lips of mine to minister to your people tonight. Let everybody go home tonight with a word and with a heart of expectation. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here tonight. And we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody shout amen. Thank you very much. That was soft and lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bishop. Bishop God, thank you. Um, I love what you have on. The only thing is that you are taller than me. So even if I take it, it will not do any good to me. So I will pass, but I would like to see your tailor. Is Bishop not looking wonderful? Thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, Bishop Wright, thank you. Thank you. And my good friend and brother, thank you for having me too. Amen. Please take your seat. Tonight is prayer in Daniel chapter 10. The Bible said that Daniel prayed, seeking the face of God, and he prayed for days. But let me start my reading from the book of Luke, chapter 1, from verse 26. Luke, chapter 1, and from verse number 26. I've been preaching for Bishop for about 30 years or maybe a little over 30 years and for some reason I noticed that we pray and we doubt at the same time we get caught up in the moment of faith and we get dried up quickly when we move into what we call reality And so the amens you see in the church, you don't see them at home. The charismatic movement and shouting and screaming, we we don't see them in our homes. So faith is only exercised in the church. 
And then when you get home, you face what we call reality. I wish we can transport what we do in the church to our homes. For 32 years, I've been around the world. And I've seen people somersault, acrobatic, roll over by the move of the Holy Spirit. They've done it all. And this very person, Corey, you see them going home and they'll start complaining. Some start crying. Some shed tears in their beds. I see God only dwell in the church. Turn to three people and tell them, wake up. But for some reason, I part of me understands why that happens. I do. Yeah. For some reasons, I do. Well, I know why we become so charismatic in the church and have faith in when we are confronted with the truth, which we call the truth, then we approach it from the humanly side. A preacher once prayed for a young lady who was affected by HIV. And then she said she's healed. The preacher praised the Lord. They all got excited. But it happened that the son of this preacher man fell in love with this young lady. <laughs> Walked straight to that and said, Daddy, I'm in love. Father said, hey, I'll support you. I'll pay for your wedding. He said, but I'm in love with the young lady that you healed. Daddy turns around and says, son, stop the nonsense now. <laughs> the lot of women in the church, I can point some out for you, but <laughs> not that one. So he goes, daddy, I believe in your prayers. She's healed in Jesus' name. He says, stop the nonsense right now. <laughs> your things I can't tell you, but son, I think you should choose someone else. What am I talking about? We pray. And we believe for a moment. And then we start talking to ourselves. And questioning the very faith. That we have preached. Faith is not. Something you take on. Faith should dwell in your subconscious. In other words. You walk it. You talk it. You live it. The amen you shout. You, you say here. Should be the same equivalent to what you do in a house. Praise the Lord. I'm just trying to help you to understand why you are still where you are. Because you only practice that faith here. I saw how you were praying tonight. Can you imagine if you do the same thing at home? Can you imagine if you practice the same faith when you go to the hospital and the doctor tells you you have cancer? And you say, in the name of Jesus, I don't have cancer. But half a time we walk away crying. Because part of you that is a human side is only Jesus that was able to balance the two. They say he was fully man and fully God. Can you imagine when you go to work and your boss, maybe you receive a letter say you're fired. And you look right in the eyes of your boss and say, we give glory to the Lord. He reigns. Faith is not an act. You live it. You talk. You walk it. Praise the Lord. So let's see where I'm going with this tonight. Luke chapter 1 and verse number 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee. Named Nazareth. Now we all know that Nazareth happened to be a small town. 
In today's Nazareth is a big city in Israel. But in those days, it was a village. It's a small town. It's an irrelevant territory. There's no important personality that lives in Nazareth. There were bigger cities, so they dwell in those places. But Nazareth was by Galilee, and it was a small town. Verse 27. And the Lord, verse 26, talked about how the Lord sent an angel to this city to see a particular woman. Verse 27, to a virgin in the city called Mary, who happened to be a fiancé, not married then, about to be. Marriage was not complete yet. To this young woman called Mary. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the Bible said that she, is a, she was a virgin then. Verse 28. And the angel came unto her and said, Hey, that has been highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. To this virgin. Verse 29. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. And cast in her mind that what manner of salutation this should be. At this point, Mary was already judging herself. Questioning, why Mary? Why me? Why do I qualify this visit? Part of her trembled. Because... We have known over the years that Gabriel comes directly from God. He was a messenger of God. The other day, he visited Daniel. He talked about the mysteries that were yet to come. So any time you see this angel called Gabriel, it means God has come to you himself. Praise the Lord. So this young woman questioned this visit. And she questioned herself and said, why me? She was troubled. Cast her mind in thinking, why would it be me? Verse 30. And the angel said unto her, fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Verse 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. I'm sure by now this young lady is dreaming, thinking, is he talking to me? Because number one, this does not add up. There are more qualified women in the city. Nazareth is a village. Why would the king of kings, the lord of lords, come to A woman who is not fully married. Why this responsibility? What is special about me? And as she questioned the angel, the angel said, listen, it's not about you. Favor has just located you. Mm. Mm. She was troubled in heart, thinking, help me to understand. Uh, There are more educated women in the city. There are more prettier women in the city. They were fully married. They they know how to how to take care of children. I am a virgin. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight you are virgin to what the Lord is about to do. Look at someone and say, I don't care how many years you've been married, you're still a virgin. (laughs) <laughs> because what God is about to do, you have never experienced it. That word virgin means never touch. The word virgin means nobody has messed up with you. Am I, am I helping somebody here? Listen, you're about to experience a new business and it's going to be a virgin. What God, no, amen is not good here. Let me move to the other side. What God is about to do in your life is to surprise your family. 
Oh, the amen is not going well. I say what God is about to do is to surprise your community. You are a virgin to what God is about to do because God is not coming to you because you're already successful. He's coming to you because you are a virgin to prosperity. The level of the blessing he's bringing, you are a virgin to that blessing. I don't care how much you have you are a virgin God is about to take your ministry to another level because you are a virgin you are a virgin Corey you are about to touch money that your generation has never seen you are a virgin you think you travel you are a virgin bishop you think you've done ministry you are still a virgin because when God locates you he will catapult you to heights you have never imagined he will take you to places that you have never seen the amen is still not good here let me go back again and maybe when I come back the amen will be better I said you are a the opportunities you have never seen there are doors that has never been opened there's a level of prosperity that no one in your family has experienced you are virgin will you do somebody a favor and say I'm a virgin Tell somebody I'm a virgin to what God is about to do. I don't, I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but, uh, but, but some of you are watching me on Facebook. I'm saying that I don't care how much of success you have experienced. You are still a virgin when they come to the date of God and come to the measurement of God because what God wants to do in your life, He has not even started. And this young lady was busy questioning herself, looking at herself in the mirror. I mean, how can you say that I'm going to have the best of marriage when men just come and sleep with me and walk away? How can you say all those good things to me, Bishop, when, when you know that relationship has been bad? I mean, Bishop, I'm growing fat. I'm not as elegant and beautiful as I used to be. Bishop H is catching up with me. Tell your neighbor you are a virgin. I feel like blessing somebody tonight. I said you are a virgin. Oh my, my, my. Tell your neighbor I'm a virgin too. I'm a virgin. What God is about to do. You have not seen it yet. He said eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has he entered into the heart of man. What God has to them that love him. Am I working it? Am I working it? And the angel has to take some time and explain to this young lady who is ignorant as we are. We are ignorant here. We think we know but we don't know what God is capable of doing. It will blow your mind. It will blow your mind. He said, listen, he said he would take you from the goddess and place you on the mountains. And that's not the end of it. Then he'll cause kings and queens to lick the dust of your feet. He said, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. And Mary was busy interrogating the visit. This, this sounds good. This sounds good. But then she asks a question. How can it be? I like what you're saying. I love it. But if I do the maths, it's not adding up. I'm too far away from what you're saying. I am not qualified. 
I don't have the level of education. I cannot mingle. I am not on that level. Jesus, the angel had to take his time and give her said, listen, this should have been a short journey, but you, you, let me help you. It is not about what you have done. It's, it's the fact that favor has located you. And when favor locates you, it's not about your efforts anymore. It's not about your intelligence anymore. Help me somebody here. It's not about your makeup anymore. It's not about your high heels anymore. It's not about your education anymore. Am I helping somebody here? It's about Jesus. Lift up your hands and shout hallelujah. Then there was a catalog of exposition of what God was going to do. Then the angel started. He said, well, behold, in that virgin womb of yours, there shall come forth a son who shall rule over the house of Jacob. And he will take the throne of his father, David. And his kingdom shall never come to an end. Then the woman said, are you still talking to me? Mm-hmm. If I need to put my profile down, I don't think I'm qualified. She loves what she was hearing, but she has a problem accepting it. Because it was too much. I prophesied tonight, God is leading me to lay hands on 30 people. In the next six months, you are going to receive a strange testimony. I see women getting pregnant here, Bishop. I see business flipping to another level. I see promotion. I see somebody getting fired because God wants to give you a new job. Because the question you're going to ask is that if I get fired, it's supposed to be a bad thing. But in the eyes of God, it does not work like that. My word, I don't know who I'm here for. But here 30 people are going to receive strange miracles. Lift up your hands and say, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. Uh, I mean, somebody may question, where is this guy, Dr. Ebenezer Tete from? This African boy, Bishop picking from nowhere. He talks as if he's know what he's talking about. I am your Gabriel. I am your Gabriel. I just came in the darker form. I came in the darker form with a little beard. Hear me. It is not how you see it. It's what God is saying. Look at yourself and say, I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. I am redeemed from poverty. I'm redeemed from limitation. I'm redeemed from sicknesses. I'm redeemed from humiliation. Talk to yourself. Say, I am redeemed. I don't blame this young woman called Mary. Because the story is just too much. Sorry, it does not make sense. There are people more qualified than us. There are people who know the Bible better than you. But God did not choose them. He chose you. Your story might have been ugly. But take it easy. When favor locates you. He will restore. All the days. That has been eaten up. By the caterpillar. By the canker worm. He's a God of restoration. Hear me. You will not lose a dime. Anything you have lost. You are receiving it. Come on. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Hey. Hey. And this young lady was busy. Questioning the angel and saying that it does not add up. What you're saying does not add up. And he said, look, look, Mr. Angel, or whatever you call yourself. You are just here to lie to me, aren't you? You are telling me stuff to make me happy because I am not even married. I know that according to the order of marriage, you have to go in and get married. But I am not married. People will talk about me. They will call my child a bastard. The angel of the Lord said, hold a second. This is not the norm. This is not the usual. When God is moving, he does not move according to the nature of man. He does not move according to the pattern of man. He moves according to his own desire. Favor has located you. That is the end of it. 
angel of the Lord said, hey, hang on a second, if I get pregnant without my husband getting married to me, people would talk. And the Lord said, when has the talking of men interfered with what God wants to do? He said, you don't understand what is coming over you is beyond the, beyond philosophy. It's beyond rules and regulations. It's beyond the system. It's beyond man. And we, am I helping somebody here? I'm saying that God is about to visit you tonight. Lift up your hands and say, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. And I, 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 I don't blame Mary. Because this thing sounds too good to be true, Corey. <laughs> it sounds too good to be true because, because I'm not even married. And what would a church say? That I had a child, a wedlock child. I had a child. <laughs> when I wasn't married, the angel of the Lord said, now hold on a second. The spirit of God, the higher spirit of God will overshadow you. That word overshadow means take over. Take control. Dominate. Tonight, I want you to dominate your house. Somebody rise and say, I dominate my life. Jump and say, I dominate my life. Ah, if we are not Africans, look at your city. If I say this in Africa, but right now, Corey, no, the whole place will jump in. Say, I dominate, I dominate, I take control. You're still sitting down. Rise and say, I take charge. There has to be a physical action to what you're saying. You see, when you believe what you're saying, for some reason, it will change the way you act. If you really believe, if you really believe, it will have some effect. On your physical action. If you really believe. You will not sit the way you're sitting. If you really believe. You don't need me to encourage you. <laughs> if you really believe. You don't want Bishop to tell you to come to church. Because you know that you know that you know that you know that you know. And because you don't need anyone to encourage you. Because you already know. Your behavior will be different. I see people sitting and you call the name of the Lord and you're quiet. Anytime you hear the name of the Lord, you need to rise up and jump because that name is above every other name. It's bigger than your boss. It's bigger than the back manager. It's bigger than your husband. It's big, uh, hold on a second. That name is bigger than all the witches in your family. That name, that name, that name is above every other name. And by the mentioning of that name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, including your enemies, including those who hate you, including those who don't like you. When you mention the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And that is not the end. He said, and every tongue shall confess I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost I see 30 virgins in this place what am I saying I see God is about to do something he's never done before you are a virgin to that thing you're about to be overshadowed and the angel of the Lord said Mary you are talking too much and you're asking too many questions it's not about your strength it's not about your abilities it's not he that will it nor he that run it the battle is not for the strong but it is God he said Mary shut up that is not your doing. He said the higher throne, the higher unction will overshadow you. In other words, will take over your problem. Will dominate your house. And then you shall bring forth a man that his kingdom shall never come to one end. Out of nothing, out of Nazareth, out of a virgin, out of an ordinary young woman who nobody has said, I love you, I want to marry you. And Joseph is just playing around, probably keep telling her, I'll marry you, I'll marry you, I'll marry you. And the Lord said, well, Joseph, you have, you have, you have delayed. We have taken over. And when God takes over, you cannot compete with God. And for behold, the young woman got pregnant. And when she got pregnant, the very thing she feared happened. The husband got upset and said, how can you be pregnant when I have not touched you? And then get out of my house. 
And when he was about to send her away, then the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court intervened and said to Joseph, Labata Kahando Bozehaya, you do no such thing. That woman in your house has been taken over, dominated. You have no right to send her away. This story will be awkward. But she carries a son. And that son shall be the Messiah. And that son shall bring victory to the world. Am I talking to somebody here? And that young lady you don't respect. That young lady you don't regard. I see. I see you giving birth. Oh, to prominent people in your family. I see God doing something new in your house. You see those kids in your house, those children in your house, and you just think they are kids in your house. God is about to transform them into something you have never seen before. I bless your womb. I bless your house. I bless your business. My God, somebody shout, yeah! Yeah. Hey! 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 The story sounds good, but how can it be? Do you know every one of us here, once upon a time, we've asked this question? Bishop, everyone here, every one of you, and some of you are still asking this question. How can it be? You have ideas, you have plans, you have hopes, you have expectations, but when you do the maths. When you look at your surrounding, when you look at your circumstances, when you look at your condition, the only question that comes through your mouth is that how can it be? Yes, sir. And as I talk tonight, some of you are asking the same question. God, how am I going to get married? How am I going to get a job? How am I going to move from this financial issue? This family issue? This addiction? How? How? And some of you are still asking that question even tonight. Even before you walk here, you ask the question. Even before you finish dressing up, you ask that question. When the beginning of the year, when you're not married, you ask that question. When they promise you and they tell you down, you ask that question. When you had a dream and you got out of the dream, the dream sounded good, you ask that question. How can it be? Bishop, the Lord said you are asking that question right now. And the Lord said I should tell you, behold, this year, he will fix it for you. No, 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 no. Every single person has a question that has not been answered. And that is a genuine doubt. That doubt is justified by circumstances. Because if you consider the situation it is very easy to ask that question. How can it be? Within the next six months, Bishop, some folks here are going to look for me to share a testimony. I release supernatural intervention. Anything that has been a problem for you, God is taking over. Your amen is not good. Anything that has been a burden, God is taking over. You will never be in a position where you ask how, how, never again, never again. How can it be? How can it be? How can it be? Every one of us here. One way or the other, you've asked that question. When you look at your dreams on paper and none of those dreams are coming to pass. When you want to buy a house, you need a house, but how can it be? God, how am I going to pay my debt? My credit card is over my head. How am I going to get my husband to pay attention? How can I turn my marriage around? How do I get a promotion? Lord, I've been stuck here for years. I have tried all avenues. Every door is shut. 
Everything looks impossible. Lord, I've given my all, yet my all is not enough. And when you come to that crossroad, when you give all that you can give, and you cook, and you clean, and you work, and he still walked away. And then you ask God, how? What am I going to do for this man to change? These are honest questions. These are sincere questions. So Mary was not being complicated. She was questioning the situation. Lord, how can it be? This thing sounds good. I have great ideas. I have plans. There are things I want to do to prove to my family that I'm not stupid. But God, how? The how has been the problem. How? How do I get a new job? This addiction, I hate it. But how do I stop it? People don't like me, but how do I get people to like me? Am I talking to somebody here? The how? How can it be? How can the ministry move to another level? How do I close that deal? I've got too many competitors. How do I survive? My children have become notorious in the house. I don't control my children. How? You come to church every Sunday and you go back home with the same how. Tonight, it ends here. Your how ends tonight. Am I talking to somebody here? Your how ends tonight. How am I getting that miracle? How am I getting that healing? How am I getting that breakthrough? Your how ends tonight. Your how ends tonight. Get up, get up, get up. Your how ends tonight. Hey! Every honest man, once upon the time, has asked this question. How? Just receiving her miracle. Concentrate on yourself because something is about to happen here tonight. Something you have never experienced. You are a virgin to what God is about to do. A miracle that you have never experienced is about to take place. I'm talking to somebody here. I see a new relationship coming. I see a man walking to you. I see somebody say, I'm in love with you. And it's not like the other guy. And this time around is the doing of the Lord. I don't know how many people I'm blessing tonight, but I feel that there is a blessing this house. Rise up and say, I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive. Keep your hands up because this is the end of your heart. Never again will you find yourself in that position. And the angel of the Lord said, Mary, we will take over you. We will overshadow you. We will take control. We will dominate the situation. It is not about you. It's not about the fact that you are a virgin. But what is coming is new. I see men walk into millions in this place. And you tell me, Dr. Tata, how is it going to happen? I don't know how it's going to happen. I know that the spirit of God will, will dominate your business. I know that Jehovah will give you favor. I know that God will cause strangers to bless you because he has taken over. I feel some strange unction in the house. I, I see sicknesses getting out of your body right now. I see promotion coming to somebody. I see a young woman getting married in this place. I see somebody being proposed to. I see you having a child. I see you buying a house. I see you moving from the apartment. Something new is happening to you right now. Ah, you are a virgin. You are a virgin to your family. What God is about to do. 
due to you in your life. Your parents have never experienced it. You are a virgin. Bishop, your children are going to be virgin. You will be surprised. The Bible is at the beginning of a thing that does not matter, but the end that justifies it all. When the time comes, a virgin will give birth to the savior of the world. I see healing coming to somebody right now. I see deliverance coming to somebody right now. Receive your healing right now. Walk to me quickly. I have something in my hands. Come for you. Run and run. Run, run, run. I see God doing something. You run. Come for you right now. It is your time. And you just sit. Receive it. Bring me that woman. Oh, the Lord say that for behold, your virginity has come. Come, 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 come. God is about to break your virginity. God is about to do something new. God is about to take over. God is about to dominate. I don't have to touch you. The Holy Ghost is touching you right now. I don't have to lay hands on you because you have received a visitation. You cannot sit. Rise up and receive it right now. Everybody here, get up on your feet. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. Bring me that lady. Bring me. Bring me that lady. Oh, favor has located her. Somebody bring me that woman. Favor has located you. Those of you watching me right now on the television, on Facebook, favor is locating you right in your house. Right in your bedroom, right in your living room. Fire! If you are sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you will see that there are 21 angels here. God opened your eyes and let them see. I see 21 angels right here bringing a solution, bringing an answer, coming to help you out because you are a virgin to what God has decided to do. Being a virgin means that it is new to you. Being a virgin means that you've never done it before. Being a virgin, it means that it is not in your field. You are yet to be introduced uh, to this kind of level of blessing. Being a virgin, it means that it's not like what happened before. God is going to do a new thing. Oh, you are a virgin land. Anytime you hear a virgin land, it means a land that has not been cultivated yet. A land that nobody has planted on it yet. You are a virgin to your family. God is about to show into your life. Rise up and shout, I receive, I receive, I receive. I receive, I receive, I receive. If you are deep, you will understand that my coming here is not to preach. I came to deliver a message. If you are deep enough, you know that this is not just preaching, but this is God communicating to you. Uh, if you are deep enough, you will know that this is new. If you are deep enough, in the time God gives you a revelation, it means that God is ready to do a new thing. Revelations are not there to be taken. Revelations are given. Am I talking to somebody here? You just don't go and take a revelation. A revelation is a mystery. God brings it. In the time God brings a revelation, it means he wants to do something new. That is why it is not everybody that can have the revelation you have. Revelations are unique. They are different pattern. Your revelation may not be the same revelation as the bishop because what God want to do in your life is not the same thing. So he will show you something you've never seen before. That means you are a virgin. I said six months of testimonies here. Are you receiving the six months? Hey, receive it right now. Oh my God, receive it right now. He's coming to her. Help her out. 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 Are you receiving it? Are you receiving it? Okay, come here. Come here. Come here right now. Come here. Come on. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Lift it up. Lift it up. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Receive 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 it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Receive it. Quickly. Bring it to me. Bring it to me. Bring it to me. Oh, you are a virgin. You are a virgin. A bishop, you are a virgin. In your ministry, you are still a virgin. I know you have done a lot of stuff and you think you have done it all, but God is about to do something new that you have never experienced. Somebody said, I receive it. 
If you want to receive, run from your seat and come to the front because today is for virgins. Corey is for virgins. I am a virgin. You are a virgin to what God is going to do in your life. It is not like what you have ever experienced. It is new. Some of you, your marriage is about to turn around. The husband that never paid attention to you, it will be like he just got married again because God has visited the house. He has dominated the conscience of your husband. He's turning his mind around. Receive! Receive! Lift up your hands, everybody here, because you deserve to be blessed. Something new is happening. If you have eyes, you can see that there are 21 angels hovering around this place with their wings up. They are here to support you. They say, enough is enough. Every sickness, every disease, anything that the doctor said, it was not going to happen. It's going to happen. Receive it. Keep your hand up. Give me some worship at the background. I, I feel a strange anointing right now. Come, 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 come. Take the microphone and, and give me something at the background. Corey, I'm just praying that God will open your eyes to see that there are the angels in this place to minister to them. You are a virgin and your angel is here to minister to you, to give unto you what your family has never experienced. As an apostle, travel around the world. I don't just travel because I want to travel. No, I will not talk if I have nothing to say. I'm done with preachers. We're just talking. And we talk here and when we go home, that is the end of it. No, 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 no. This message is taking you home. You go home and, and you'll be in this mood. And every negativity, if you have a son who is on drugs, you go lay hands on your son and say, My son, you are delivered. We don't practice church and go home as if we are not believers. We don't come here and shout and be all charismatic and go home and allow the devil to intimidate us. We don't come here and look at all holy and righteous and men of faith and then we become fragile when we are going back because, because when you go back and you look at your bank account and you look at your credit card and you receive the letter in the morning, you look at the letter, you open it and they say if you don't pay your bills, they're going to kick you out of the house and then everything you did in the church disappears. But hear me, let me tell you something that time is gone for behold God is doing a new thing as you go home tonight you are going home with this unction receive it quickly 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 I don't have to touch you the anointing of God is coming I don't have to lay hands on you you receive it by yourself hey! receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost la, 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 la. receive it is coming quickly watch it receive it watch it watch it watch it watch it watch it watch it you're receiving it it's a new thing it's a new day it's a new day it's a new day it's a new season it's a new year you are virgin bishop you are virgin presence Lord all I want is to be with you it's nothing like your presence Lord and she asks how can it be being the virgin I'm not even married what would people say? How would they describe me? The angel of the Lord said, The how is not your business. You leave the how. A higher unction will handle it. In other words, it's not your level. Woman, what is coming, you can't. It's not your level. It's above you. It's higher than you. It's higher than your faith. It's higher than what you can believe. Oh, beyond your imagination. What God is bringing, you can't even imagine it. It's beyond what you can comprehend or apprehend. It's never happened before. It's a new thing. And that is why we chose a virgin. Because if you pick any woman who is experienced, they will say that because she was experienced, that is why she was able to deliver. But behold, when she was delivering Jesus, she delivered Jesus in the manger. The Bible says that she went to the hospital and the clinic and the nurse said, you cannot come in here because it's full. And that woman, Virgin managed to deliver a child where animals live. And she survived. 
You know why? Because a higher unction was in control. Your business is changing. I say your business is changing. You are going to get a new job. Oh, for a long time, there has not been promotion. Hear the words of the prophets. Within the next six months, I see promotion. Hey. Within the next six months, I see promotion. <laughs> Within the next six months, I see God bringing you divine healing, supernatural healing, receiving. Receiving. I may not look like your angel. Yeah, yeah. I may not look like your angel. The things I may say to you may sound weird to you. And that is how Mary looked at the angel. He said, what are you saying? Who gets pregnant without a man? The things he was saying sounded good, but it was strange at the same time. There are things God saying to you right now. You say, oh, this is just another preaching. Uh, preachers, preachers, they say good stuff, but they never happen. That was a, that was a behavior of Mary. But the angel of the Lord said, you are questioning this thing too much. It is not about your efforts. It's not about your abilities. It's not about your faith. It's about God. And we were Keep your two hands up, everybody you, here quickly. You are God. And let the Holy Ghost touch you right now. And we were people are going to be falling. You. People are going to be falling. We don't have to touch them. People are just going to be falling under the anointing. By the count of seven. Number one, receive. <laughs> number two, receive. Number three, receive. (laughs) Number four, receive. Number five, receive. Number six, number seven, number eight, receive. I have come to the end of. It's happening. Some of you, your hands are getting weak. Some of you, your feet are getting weak. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Watch it. I have come to the Watch end it. of myself. Watch Hallelujah. It. Somebody Hallelujah. help. I have come the Holy to Ghost. the end of my It's working. Take it's working. Over. Take over. It's working. I have come to the end of myself. It's Take working. Take over. It's working. Take over. It's working. The attention is working. I see angels here. Hallelujah. I see angels here. Hallelujah. I see angels here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Oh. Oh. I see angels. Woman, come here quickly. If you're sick in your body, receive your healing right now. Take over. If you're sick in your body, receive your healing right now. I have come to receive the it. end of myself. Take over. Quickly receive it. Receive it. Take over. Receive it. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. You come. 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 Lift up. Lift up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Receive it. I have come to the end of myself. The unction is free. The unction is free. I have come. Today is the end of your heart. Today is the end where you're going to ask questions. God, how is it going to be? It is not you. It has never been you. Take home. I asked a woman one day. Take home. I asked a woman to sow a seed. Of five thousand dollars. 
and that God is going to bless her. Then she asked me a question. It's a vision. The five thousand dollars is towards my rent. Now, if I give that five thousand dollars, you tell me how I'm going to take off my kids and how I'm going to pay my rent. Then I looked ahead and I said, "My God shall supply all your needs." <laughs> dollars. She said that is all I have in my account. That is all I have in my account. Five thousand dollars. I said give that five thousand dollars. You know what she did Corey? She took the money and she threw the money at me. Yeah. She took the money and she threw the money at me. Then I said to her, I'm sorry, but I don't know how. I don't know how this thing is going to work out. But I know tomorrow by this time, your story will change. Hold on. In three days, I was told the woman is looking for me. I went, and it was the same woman. But this time around, she came with two other women. And I said, okay, how are you? She said, Bishop, I don't know what to tell you. I brought these two ladies so that they can also come to sell 5,000. After my testimony, they followed me here. She has won a contract of $1 million. Hear me. There are miracles that are beyond you. There are blessings that are not your level. I have a message. I don't know how my visit here is going to be like. Because by Monday I'm done. But if I have an opportunity, there's a message I'll preach here. There are battles we are not designed to fight them. Yeah. The reason why you are tired because you are fighting battles you are not designed to fight them. There are battles that are fought by gods. Yeah. I don't care how anointed you are. Shh. I don't care how anointed you are. Hear me? For my 32 years preaching, there are battles you cannot fight them. They are fought by gods. Yeah. Receive it. Oh, there, there are battles that it's only gods that fights them. All of you here receive it. When you try, touch it. When you try to do it, you will grow wrinkled, old, and you still be fighting. The battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord. They are receiving. There are levels of battle you can fight. There are battles you are not designed to fight them. <laughs> These are strange messages. I prayed for a bishop. He had this message. He visited my hotel. He said, tell me more about this. I said, why? He said, you know, everyone knows me to be a big preacher. But I'm addicted to cocaine. Mm. Mm. He said, Listen, you just touch on something. It has been my biggest secret. Hmm? He, he says, I'm on cocaine, yet I'm a big preacher. Mm. He said, I've done everything. I go into fasting, I go into prayer, but I cannot stop cocaine, yet I'm a great preacher. And I see a lot of them in America here. I know preacher who finished preaching go outside and smoke cigarette. Mm. And when you ask, they say, that is, that is my cross. Jesus carried a cross once. A burning cross. And people are still carrying the cross. What am I talking about? Listen to me, everybody here. There are battles you are not designed to fight them. It takes a higher unction. Supernatural intervention. 
Some of you are questioning yourselves. You think you are not good enough. That is why something did not happen. No. There are some level of poverty in families. It's not because you don't work hard. Because that poverty has been there for generations. You were born into it. You inherited it. For you to come out, you need a higher function to help you. Without knowledge, faith becomes an illusion. I can do it. I can do it. Look at your life. Look at your age. Oh, you have pride. There are battles you can fight. There are some you cannot fight. There's some level of prosperity that you are initiated into it. Not because you work hard. There's some level of Sussex. When you touch it, you go mad. There's some level of blessings. When you get there, you, you automatically generate enemies. People hate you for nothing. There are battles that are not your level. There are sicknesses that is not cured by medicine. The gospel is a mystery. It's a mystery. And I see people exercising faith. Thank God for your faith. But what is happening is not your level. The son on that drugs, in that addiction, you are blaming him. Stop blaming the son. It's not his fault. He would have loved to stop it, to please you. That son loves you, but there's something that's been infused into his bloodstream, his bloodline. It's a generational curse. I've dealt with issues like that. I've dealt with complicated issues. I've had preachers come to me and say, Bishop, I have a problem with women. A great preacher, but cannot get married. Cannot be a husband. People are not honest. And the question Mary asked was an honest question. How can it be? The angel of the Lord said, this is an honest question. So let me help you out. The spirit of the Lord will overshadow you. Then Mary said, let it be according to thy word. I don't know who want to try God with a $5,000 tonight. I don't know who want to try God with a $1,000 tonight. I don't know who is bold enough to provoke God. Yeah, 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 yeah. There are days you, you provoke God. Let me, let me tell you something else. Just something tiny here. There is a level of obedience. When you obey, when God does not bless you, God becomes guilty. Yeah. Mm. These are these are levels you cannot understand. Hello, I pray for a fifty-year-old woman, fifty-year young woman, who cannot get pregnant, and she said the doctors are saying that you cannot get pregnant because when you are young you cause an abortion and they touch your womb. Mm. Then I asked the woman to give her her nine-month salary. And this woman every month gave her nine month salary. And I said, on the ninth month, you get pregnant. On the ninth month, she got pregnant. When she went to the hospital, the doctor said, hang on a second. Whose specialist did you see? She said, I didn't see any specialist. I went to see Dr. Tete. When he said Dr. Tete, she, he thought I was a medical doctor. He said, can you give me his number to understand? Because you getting pregnant is against medicine. Your womb, you should not have a child. Listen to me. That woman obeyed God. For nine months. If God does not give her that child. God becomes guilty. Anytime God tells you to do something. And you don't do it. God gets away. When you do it. He's obliged to respond. These are. Highly spiritual principles. The ordinary Christian cannot handle it. I need somebody tonight. To say man of God. I am tired of my situation. I am fed up. I need help. I want to provoke God. What do you do here? Do you give envelopes or how do you do it? 
I'm not going to stay more than two minutes on this because when people are ready to commit God, you don't force them. Mm-mm. And when people give, they don't complain. Mm. Do you know for 32 years, I realized that people who give don't complain. People who don't give complain. Leave them your two hands. Tonight, I declare any stagnation issue in your house within the next six months, it shall be solved. Bishop, I don't know how people are going to do this, but if you are giving whatever, 1,500, whatever you're doing, come, let me pray for you. Quickly. Quickly, let me lay hands on you. Whatever you are giving, I don't care. Just come and let me pray for you. If you have it, how do you do it? You write it, you give it by check, whatever you do. I don't know that, but come, let me pray for you. Come quickly. Any amount you want to give, just come. Proceed. Receive it. Come quickly. Anything, it doesn't matter. Just come, receive it. I feel some anointing here. I want to pray for 30 people. Come quickly, receive it. I want to pray for 30 people, receive it. Receive it quickly. Help me, help me. 30 people, any of you that I pray for, I see a miracle happening. Where are you? Come, 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 come. Anything you are giving does not matter. Just come forward. Come, receive it. Help me, help me. Protocol, help me, help me, help me. Help me, help me. Lift it, lift up. Help me, help me. You have to... You have to be quick. You have to be quick. Stand behind them. Not in front of them. Behind them. Behind them. Corey, help him. Behind. Not in front. Receive him. Quickly. Behind. It's a quick onshi. Help him. Help him. Behind. Help him. Help him. Help him. Behind. We don't force you to give. You give by faith. Are you coming? Quickly. 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 Help him. Receive it. Quickly. Quickly. I feel strong. If you are here, you are sick. Run to me. Quickly. If you are here and you are sick, come to me. I want to pray for you. You are sick. You have a chronic, you have a chronic disease. You are sick. You are sick. You are sick. Quickly, quickly. Time is gonna to have to finish. You are sick. Help them. I feel some strange anointing. Help me, help me. I feel some anointing. Come quickly. You are sick in your body. You are sick. Help me. You are sick. 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 Lift up your hands. You're sick. I don't know what of sick. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Quickly, quickly. Who's coming? Two or three more people come. Receive it quickly. Yes, yes. Come, come quickly. You say what? That is why. That's fine. Breast cancer. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Quickly. Breast cancer disappearing. Every kidney problem, liver problem, nerve problem, bone problem, marrow problem, nerve problem. In the name of Jesus. Quickly. Again. Receive it. Bishop, thank you for tonight. The Lord said I should tell you it is done. There is something you will do for Bishop. I don't know what it is. But the Lord says to me, there is an exchange of giving and a blessing. I don't know if it makes sense, but that's what the Lord is saying. The two of you should meet. Let favor locate you. Let that we God is going to do be like he has said. Receive it. <laughs> Receive that unction. This unction is not given to you by man. I cannot give you that unction. It's a higher unction. It's God himself. Receive it. Thank you. Amen. Man, I can feel the Holy Spirit all over in this place. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Come on, let's magnify the name of the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen, I have no doubt that God is speaking tonight. And when God speaks, we have to take it to heart. Amen? How many of you believe that God, as from today, is going to do a new thing in your life? 
I, I, I will talk to the people over here. How many people believe that today God is going to do something new in your life? Glory to God. I decree over your life that the Egyptians that you saw yesterday, you will see them no more. I don't care about whatever generational curse that the enemies place over your family. I decree by the Spirit of the Lord that tonight it is breakthrough time for you in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Glory to God. You may you may be seated. We're getting ready to get out of here. But listen. But listen, when the enemy will come, the Bible says Satan cometh but find nothing in me. Uh, you just look at the enemy. You do the Nike, right? You give them the hand, right? You give the devil the hand and say, I'm a virgin. Repeat it, repeat it. I'm a virgin. For what the Lord is about to do, I do not even know it. <laughs> Bishop, we thank God for the word tonight. We thank God for the word tonight. It's going to, this weekend is going to be a blessed weekend. We have another breakthrough Sunday night, this Sunday night, and Bishop, we're going to talk to him. We're going to talk to him on Sunday night. Man, you look like you're not excited. The Lord just made you a virgin and you are like <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's stand to our feet. Let's stand to our feet. Let's stand to our feet. Bishop did mention something when he was preaching. And uh, I, I, I sense what he said with him. I don't know, but the Bible says, he who receives a prophet shall receive God's reward. And the word receive in the original language is that who, he who support a prophet to do the work of the Lord shall receive God's pay. As you go out, the man came all the way down from Ghana, West Africa. Listen, even if it's 20 cent that the Lord put in your heart, uh, on your way out, just drop it in the altar and we will make sure that he gets it. He gets it. Whatever amount the Lord placed on your heart, be a blessing. Just say, Lord, I'm supporting this man because of where he came from and I know that you will reward me. I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for there are blessings that will be with us for the rest of our life. Lord, we decree that which we receive, no demon can take it away from us. For it is a new season. It's a new day. You are doing a new thing in our life. Open your mouth and say, Satan, the Lord rebukes you. I will keep my blessing in this season. In Jesus name. And if you believe it, give the Lord a shout of hallelujah. God bless you. We see you on Sunday and on Sunday night. Amen.